quick 180. So let's take this uh, dipstick out. These are the same as the um, the gearbox. Let's have a little sip of coffee, keep myself hydrated. Right, so again, you're going to want to crack off these um, these four bolts. Got my little oil bowl on the floor because I'm pretty certain this is going to spew some oil. Um, these are going to be not these are not going to be your uh, six mil. They look like they're going to be. Five mil. Five mil. Then one, two, three, and four. No need for the thumb fucker on that one. T bar, that's off. I've got you quite close, so you may end up looking at my my hands. As you can see, this is already coming apart. There is an O, there is a gasket on this, so we're going to hold. I think it's just an O ring because I'm sure it's going to start dribbling as soon as. Not overly big. As you can see, let's have a little bit of tissue ready just in case. Oh, and straight into the bowl. How fortunate was that? So, not a lot in there. Back casing, there is a O ring. Again, it'll be replaced. O ring. And pop that down there. Now you can see, you can see you got the crank in there. Let's see if we can move you down a little bit and get you a better position. Excuse the wobbling. I'm not Michael Bay, so excuse the cinematography. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit closer. Now you can see inside. Let's perhaps just lift you up just a smidge image. Just using my, for some reason, it's a, my very old worn tripod. Dummy well. So you can see the crank in there. I'm pretty sure most people know how cranks work. But I shall get my trusty gear that we took off in a previous episode just so I can use it to turn the crank so basically these here let's use a little pointy stick let's go for a screwdriver so obviously these act as con rods similar to what you'd see in a any normal engine so you've got con rods held in again with some just some normal 8.8 .8 steel bolts and that's it it's just reciprocating so that's that end and I know you are gagging to see the other end so let's spin you around this side without tipping the oil bowl over because that would piss me right off because we've got the window behind us, light is going to be crap. So let's see if we can get some light on this. Is that going to make any difference whatsoever? Not really. So, you 
can see the or where the pistons would go moving up and down so exactly the same as a typical engine up down up down up down although this one only does suck and squeeze it doesn't do the bang and blow so that's that let's bring you back around this side so in order to um, release this what we're going to have to do uh, we're going to have to crack these bolts off which will release these end caps and then technically the whole um, like the rest of the conrod mechanism or, or part would slide out from this side um, so then obviously um, you crack the side bits off and that should give you more wiggle room to enable the crank to come out that's the theory I'm gonna stick to that theory for the time being as I've never had one of these apart yep that's my theory now one would assume that because we, these, um, let's move this side, and I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work this way. When we took the casing off for the gearbox and we had those four screws from behind, that seems to be the only thing that's holding this end cap on, um, because obviously it's screwed directly into the, um, the pump housing. So I'm going to assume that this these two little bits here they've given you so you can lever that off um, I mentioned about the keyway the um, the key I'm gonna try and pull that out hopefully it's gonna come out for me because um, obviously in order to slide the, the, the seal over um, that's gonna need to come out so get yourself some decent pliers Let's see if we can pull this key way out, this key out. Just wiggle it gently with a firm grip. You may have to deburr this when you put it back in because you may end up chomping it up a little bit. See it's tight on one end and you can see obviously where you've gripped it with the pliers you can see some teeth marks. So you just need just to file those bits off when you put it back in, just to ease it when you put the gear back on. So, one would suggest that by taking a couple of reasonable sized screwdrivers, Let's move you around a little bit more. And by popping one in this side and one in this side, you should just gently, gently wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And you can see that end cap starting to come off. Don't leave that on here because it may have a seal on it, it may not, I don't know yet. Once you get it so far, you may just be able to use your fingers. No, that is tight, so you might have to use some bigger screwdrivers. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You know, so far, a lot of this has mugged me off. The gearbox mugged me off for no end. Yeah, there's a little O-ring inside. Let's... Where's me chunky screwdrivers? If in doubt, use a couple of tire irons. Just Ooh. 
like that. There's always multiple uses for tools. So that comes out. Nice big fat roller bearing in there. And that's your main seal. I gave you the wrong size in the last video. It's it's actually a 30, 55, 7, not a 5.5. So we shall place that over here. So that's that side. You can still see the crank inside there, and you can see where it's gonna where the um, the con rods are gonna split. So let's um, it's being held in. I imagine it's being held. Yeah, let's see. It's, it's loosened off now, so it's being held in on the other side. So let's spin this, let's just loosen that, and see if we can spin this. I'm just going to quickly drain the oil that's in there out. These nut, these bolts on here are going to be bigger, so you're going to need to go back to your trusty six mil, and they're going to be a lot tighter too. You might need the use of a thumb fucker on that. Use the old faithful if in doubt give it a clout just not too hard mind you mind your knuckles So again, these bolts, 8.8. .8. So they're just normal bolts from what I can find. So again, you can replace them with stainless if you so wish. So same principle is going to apply, screwdrivers, again, you could probably get away with giving it a tap with a hammer, but let's use a couple of screwdrivers, because normally that's why they give you them points there, is so you can lever it. So you've got your sight glass on this one, so be a little bit careful. Because I'm sure this one, there's no shaft to catch it, so when it goes, it will just go. So it's not a mated surface, it's actually sealed from inside. So if you wanted to if you wanted to um, go from up here, you could. Um, obviously the main part is trying to get it to come off square. Which is not 
really doing at the moment. It's, it's not coming off square, which is why it's getting stuck. There we go, and it's holding in the crank. So let's get that cap off. Again, another another meaty ball bearing. There's no reason why these should wear. They shouldn't really wear out because they're they're soaked in oil. So you should get many many hours out of them. I mean, if there's any stupid amounts of play in there, then obviously you can replace them. But they feel pretty good. I'll check the price on them and see what they are. If they're not that expensive, then you can replace them. So we're into the uh, we're into the meat of her now. So he's got a, a bearing thing there, fag bearing. Don't know if that's just a sleeve or whether that's pressed onto the crank. It's, it feels like it's pressed on. So right, let's. Uh, Let's flip her around again and uh, go back to the other side. Right, one second, let's re re readjust. Right, readjustment made. Made a bit of a schoolboy error in as much as taking those end caps off meant the crankshaft will flop about like a donkey's dick. So I've just popped those caps back on just to hold the crank um, centre or square so when we crack these off the, the crankshaft's not you know, you're not fighting the crank. So these are going to be your normal, um, they're going to be six mil, yeah, they're going to be six mil. Um, but obviously as they're slightly recessed, we may need the use of, uh, when I get on them, no, you might get on them. Oops. Okay, so they're not stupidly tight. Tight enough, but not, not ridiculous. Let's crack all of these off. Now there is bushings inside um, here, which we'll see in a minute. So if you're not changing out the bushings, then it's worth making a mental note of which one of these is which. Um, I don't know whether my pen is gonna write on here, but we're gonna put one, two, three, that'll also show you which way up they go as well. Doesn't matter which way the bolts go back in, but it's just common practice because obviously the crank will wear and it will wear into the, we're gonna call them rods because I'm sure that's probably what they're gonna be called. Again, you can wear gloves if you want, if you don't like the, the oil. After years of working in the, with dirty, oily engines, it does take away the sensation. It takes away the feeling of what you're doing, so I don't particularly like wearing gloves. As long as you wash your hands afterwards and keep wiping your hands regularly, you'll be all right. Just don't tell your GP. Right, so that's all the bolts. Caps are going to come off. There may be some dowel pins. No, no dowel pins. So number two, number three, and they run. They run straight. There's no no bearings on these. Obviously, these are not high speed, so they're obviously only going to be running at about 1400 RPM. So unlike a car that would just be above idle at that kind of uh, that kind of speed.
Right, so what you're going to want to try and do is push these back up to give you clearance around the crank, like so. Then pop your caps back off. One. and then she should with a little bit of movement because if she don't then obviously I can't work out Takes a little bit of jiggery pokery, but the crankshaft is out. Have a good look at the journals, and you can see they're nice and smooth. There's no score marks in these. If anything had gone drastically wrong inside this pump, it would have dropped shards and you'd see all of the there may be like a might might be um ground so you see some of the you see some bits missing out of the crank Let's give her a quick wipe so we can see what we're doing let's put this filthy old cloth over there to give it something to focus on And right at that exact moment, the battery decided to end its life. Fresh battery. Right. There's the crankshaft in all its glory. It's quite straightforward. It's quite basic, really. And there you go. You can see. You can see the rods in there. Let's put my crankshaft down somewhere. Somewhere safe. Now, these should, I would say, would slide straight out. Let's go for the middle one. They should just come straight through. There's your, there's your rod. And there is, you can, I don't know if you can see, right where my finger is at the back here, there is a bushing in there, which does, they're replaceable. They're not that expensive. They're only about six, seven quid. Uh, have a look at the bushing. Um, if you've got motorcycle knowledge, it would look very, very similar to a fork bush. Um, but when you take these out again, because we put numbers on them, um, I'm just going to, if I can find my brake cleaner. Um, which is either gone bye bye, there it is, look, no it's not. It's either right in front of my bloody face. Size golf on a little adventure. It's right down here on the bloody floor. Right. Just give the end a quick spurt with a bit of brake cleaner just to get the oil off. And obviously, these do come apart. There's a little pin, like a little gudgeon pin. Keep them together, would be best. And if I can find my Sharpie. Again, right on it. Cool. See, no, it goes that way. I wouldn't take the gudgeon pin out unless you're, uh, just for argument's sake. And for, we'll put T for top. In fact, we'll put T2 on it. You can never be too careful because you never know when somebody's going to decide to come out into your man cave and piss about with stuff that's not theirs. So we shall take out this one. Again, little spritz. Brake cleaner's great. As long as it's not the, uh, the too corrosive type, just 
run of the mill cheap brake cleaner is great because it removes grease. Number one. T1. Guess what we're going to write on this one. You got it. T6. No, money messing. T3. T3. And then that way you know, obviously if you clean it, you're going to lose the marks. But that way you know that when you put this back in, which way up they go. It may sound completely silly, but that bronze bushing in there don't move. If these will go in the same way from new, they've obviously going to have um, mated themselves. So if this gets turned round, you may find that it's not, you know, it's not kind of lapped itself in, should we say, with the appropriate um, cam journal. So it's always worth putting things back in exactly the same way that you took them out, just to save any undue wear. Right, that's that really. Let's see if I can, uh, I'm gonna zoom you out and then move you closer. Let's wind you down just a tad. Should give you some light in there. So you can see, there's not really much to it, it's just cast. Those, uh, these bushings at the back there, again, they're replaceable. Let's, let's just turn this round. So you can see the seals in there. Possibly. Let's move it back just a little bit. There's seals in there. I believe I have got new ones of those. Which I would say are oh, what's written on them. These are C226. Don't know if they're actually in the kit. They might be. Let me see if I can read them. C two 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 T ten. C two two five six. Just muttering to myself. This seal doesn't seem to have any size markings on it. It looks about the right size. Let's double check the schematic and see if it comes in a kit. Let's pull you back a little bit. So we are going to be looking at number 59 and according, according to the kits, number 59, Anello Rad, comes in kit 2. It says three pieces in kit number 2 and I've got three of these. So those are, those are the seals to replace these ones in here. So I have them. Um, maybe easy to bang them out from the other side because I'm not sure if you'll get enough leverage. Let's just see. I don't know if you can. One. Two, three. Obviously, once you've levered the shit out of these seals, the chances are you're gonna 
you're going to have busted the um, these little numbers. Sometimes there's little springs, you can't really see them. But inside the seals, there is a tiny spring. I don't know if you can see that. So when you start levering on stuff, you end up you end up breaking them. So there's two. There's three. Make sure you've got all your old parts and keep them away from your new parts. So yeah, these are the bushings in here. They look pretty good. And you can't really see from, from there. But normally you would see if they're Teflon. Well, actually, no, that one. That one feels like it's got a bit of a nasty score on it. Where it's supposed to be there. Let's check this one. You can feel the same on that one. There's a score on that one as well, so I'm going to assume, judging by the fact it's on all three, it's either supposed to be there where the Teflon joins, or it could possibly be something simple like the um, if these are split, yeah, they're um, split for a reason. Um, we may be able to get them out. Let's just see if I can gently, gently get them out. Let's move this back. Zoom you in. And there is a recess in there, just for that reason. Let's not use a screwdriver, let's use Let's use them. That's a bit too big. Let's go five mil and the rubber hammer. There's a recess in there. No, they are tight. No, they are tight. So you can normally tell roughly what the condition of those bushes are going to be if you look at if you look at these rods. Um, if these rods are all gashed up, you can see where the, it's quite clear this side. If you move it around this side, you probably can't really tell, but there's some faint, faint score lines on this side. Which doesn't tally up to where the... Uh, it does this side, if you look... For, I don't know if it's gonna, it's gonna, you're probably not going to see it because it's quite reflective, but there is a score. A very, it's very, very faint. You can't even feel it with your finger, but you can see it. There's a line that runs up there, and that seems to correspond to where that, that that seam is inside but yeah that's it really um, I'll have another little dig at these I'll have a little look see if I can get a clearer picture of what they look like um, but apart from that that is that is the pump completely stripped um, there's nothing else to take out of that apart from those three bushings in there so I've checked the price of them they're about seven quid each. So in reality, if you've gone this far with the strip, you've got absolutely everything out. I mean, you know, for the sake of a, you know, just over a score in parts, you know, you could, um, you could put some new ones in. Um, but yeah, let me just, this is actually quite light. You know, I know the crank's not in it anymore, but, um, in comparison, even when the crank was in it, it's a damn sight lighter than the bloody manifold was. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Obviously, once you've got all it apart, go indoors.
on a nice bowl of soapy hot water in the wife's sink. And um, when she's gone out, give everything a good old clean. So it's all nice and clean when it goes back together. And obviously when you put it back together, you just have um, some of the oil hand handy that you use. Uh, I think it's just a straight, I'm not sure what is in this. It might be a um, just a normal SA30 oil, I think. Not too sure if I've got any up on the shelf. What have I used in here? I've used, uh, I don't know. Can't see it if I'm honest. Um, I think they recommend an SA30. Um, but yeah, just have a little pot of it. So obviously you can lube up all your journals. So obviously when you do fire it up for the first time, it's not going to be running all dry. So make sure everything's nice and lubed. Because we do like a little bit of lube. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it for the strip down of this lot. Next video is going to be the rebuild. Take it easy. Bye for now.